Hi! On the woodpecker today, as you can see, we spent another seven days at the cottage. And as usual, we had a lot of adventures. But I still had the time to build this stand for this TV set that I use when I want to program with my Raspberry Pi. Our stay at the cottage started without René. I came with our son to compact the trail so we wouldn't have any surprises. This was without incident. I will come back to this later on. At the cottage, during the winter, I program with a Raspberry Pi. But this small screen is way too small. Programming with it uh, is not fun. But I have this TV that I mostly use as an old game monitor. I decide to repurpose it. On this shelf, I have this bracket screwed to it. On the TV, I have the other part of the bracket I made. Originally, we used this TV and we have another support screwed here. I'm going to use it. But before starting to work on the support, we need to assemble the workbench inside the cottage. <laughs> Usually, we install it here. But today, <laughs> it's out of the question. The first thing to do is to cut part of the plank we brought for the base. You will notice that I'm using my left arm. <laughs> oh yes, this is because my right elbow is giving me pain when I use it. It's the reason why I'm not doing the big projects I wanted to do in the shop, at least for now. I won't have any super interesting project for several months. When the base is cut, I still need to make the vertical section. This is way too wide. I need to rip it in two. I cut with an Ensa, it's not really nice. I have to smooth that a bit. This is when I realize that I have quite a lot of tools here, but most of them are not very good. The vertical support will go here and the TV like that. To hold this in place, I cut some tenons and mortises. I mark the base, but I'm going to cut the tenons first. After marking them, I cut them. Doing all this with my left arm is quite strange. After cleaning between the tenons, I can transfer the marks on the base and cut the mortises. When the holes are done, it's time to clean the mortises. Uh, this wasn't part of my plan. After making sure the vertical part of the stand enters the base, I can glue this. The first thing to do is to remove the pencil marks. Ah uh, yes, but the only glue I keep all year round at the cottage is epoxy. But uh, when it's cold like this, it's even thicker than molasses. So I need to liquefy both bottles. In the shop, I have an old microwave for this. Here. I'll use hot water. After waiting a couple of minutes, both tombs flows like water and it's now possible to mix the epoxy. I spread glue everywhere and put both pieces together. But on the other side, I need to glue in place the piece that flew off. <laughs> Since my assembly is less than perfect, I use the leftover glue to fill in the gaps. 
Now I just need to wait for the glue to dry. This is the ideal time to remove the bracket from the wall. When the epoxy is all cured, I can level the bottom and screw the other part of the swivel. But it's only after putting the TV in place that I realize that it won't stay straight by itself. I need to add another support. With my new support, I can try this again. This is way better, but I think it can be tilted a little bit more. So I cut another longer support. If I use a smaller support as an extra spacer, it's even better. Now programming is way nicer. In fact, I'm testing some code, so I will be able to have a tiltable camera in the shop. But we also had quite a few adventures. The biggest one was when the brakes failed on my truck. What you see on the rim is actually brake fluid. Now it's possible to see that behind the rim it looks brand new. But uh, it's not the only adventure I had with my son. <laughs> no, Frankie broke the reverse lever on the snowmobile. I had to make do with a screwdriver. We also broke one of the two bolts that hold the suspensions of the snowmobile. We replaced it with another bolt. But less than 350 kilometers later, I broke the one on the other side. I need to fix this if I want to go back onto the trails. So after removing a bit of snow, it's possible to drill another hole for a common bolt. Then I fix the bolt in place with two nuts across the frame. We need to put the snowmobile on its side to put the spring back in place. Mm, there's a lot of tension on this spring. Yeah. Okay. This. But now the snowmobile has to come back on its track. Here is our quick repair. Now I'm able to go for a small ride again. No, I didn't ride my snowmobile a lot while we were there. Instead, I used the opportunity that the snowmobile compacted the snow to take a lot of walks. We also put our snowshoes and walked on the lake. René and I love snowshoeing on the lake. <laughs> That's when we notice that we're not alone. Here you can see length tracks. It's obvious to see all the tracks are aligned, like the ones from a cat, but further apart. Unlike those from a fox that are close together and staggered like the tracks of a dog. And speaking of fox, here it is. The worst thing that happened to us was when we had water seeping through the walls. It's the first time we spent so much time out there during the winter. With the heat on inside, a lot of ice formed on the edge of the roof. This side mm, is not that bad. But on the south side of the cottage, the walls are full of water. This is because the soffits are airtight. All the extra water runs down the walls. I need to remove some planks. Here you can see 
the water and ice. In all, I removed about uh, a yard of planks. All this water was dripping on my window. It's not dripping inside anymore. But I will have to redo all the soffits this summer. After seven nights, it's time to go back to the truck. And there, we had another pleasant surprise. A flat tire. <laughs> it's my fifth one in 12 months. This time, it's way nicer to lay on the clean snow instead of mud. Looking on the bright side, I can see more closely the nice job the mechanic did on my brakes. All that's left to do is to put the spare tire on, put the flat tire in place of the spare, and put the snowmobile in the pickup box. I must admit, I had a great time in spite of everything. And as a bonus, I will have a nice support for the TV next winter. Already, to program with the Raspberry Pi I leave there. I know this support is very rudimentary, but it does the job quite well. And see you soon for the next episode of The Woodpecker.